Okay. <laughs> this is Animal Paradise. Um, today, I want to share some points with us. I'm relaxing somewhere. I just decided to do some video and uh, share some points based on what we are passing, um, what we are experiencing. You said what? Have you started? Yes, I started. Based on what we are experiencing and what we are seeing, um, the essence of the videos that we make is to. <laughs> so that my face can be showing. The essence of the videos that we make is to um, share our experiences and also share some knowledge so that other people we learn and not make the mistakes that we made um we made either when we we're starting or as we are going along and there are some mistakes we used to make um take for instance recently uh, this year i made a very big mistake i ordered for um a hammer a hammer meal and um, a pelletizer the hammer meal and the pelletizer were three-phase machine a three-phase electric motor that three-phase simply means that the three electricity the three cables that is on the um, um, Nepal line uh, Nigerian people will be able to relate with that word I use Nepal line um, the, the three must have light <gasps> excuse me the three must have light for you to be able to power that machine so the normal generator we are you having cannot power the machine so um, I have not been able to um, get to the point of using it. I had to um, divert um, to, to take another route to go get um, a land somewhere where there can be three-phase line, and then start building something, a place, a place where I can keep them, and then start using them there. I was supposed to take them to my farm, use the generator to power it. That was my plan, uh, but now the generator cannot power it. And generator cannot power it so um i just have to rely on electricity uh, though the hammer mill i can convert that to to um, gasoline engine but the pelletizer the way it is done it cannot be converted to a gasoline engine and then i also have a second option of ordering for a single face machine from china which i'm trying to do so that um i can be using um, generator to power it when there's no light uh, because based on our activities sometimes you may be chanced and there's no light no electricity and you have time and uh, you may appropriate a day for blending the all the stuff you want to blend and that day there's no light and then maybe when there is light you are far away in one of the states in nigeria are you seeing it and because we are starting it newly the workers may not be able to handle it while i'm not there now, even though they can handle it, there's nothing like when you are there. And when you are there, I think that's one of the points I'm going to talk about today, managing your managers. And you just have to manage your managers. I'll get there. And so that's one of the reasons why we share the videos that we make. And then we have Animal Paradise Mentorship Club. Uh, Mentorship Club is a paid group on WhatsApp. You register to join it. And you register to join it. We have um, over 100 people in that place. I uh, visited a lot of their farms. Um, we help to manage the farms. And we help to manage the farms, either by coming physically or by managing it um, online through video calls and so different ways, either through normal calls, video calls, and um, through videos and audios. We just help to put things in place. If you are starting a new farm, we will show you what to do, steps to take that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> steps to take um that, that may not be so expensive because um when you're starting a farm you have a lot of things to spend money on so you don't have to really spend money on some things take for instance if you have as high as um 50 acres of land uh, you don't have to buy a tractor yeah, don't buy a tractor at most you can rent a tractor or cover your land in fractions and if you cover your land in fractions you will um it is easier that way and if you have 50 acres or 50 as much land as you have divide them into fractions okay for this period of time i want to use this fraction 
I want to fence this fraction. When you fence that fraction and do what you want to do there, your, um, whatever agricultural um, thing you want to do there, you can raise money from there and add money to it and cover some other sections of your farm. And take for instance, or you divide them into, into sections. You have five, five, 50, acre, 50 acres or 50 hectares or whatsoever measurement, divide them into three sections and say, okay, this section I want to use for ruminant farming or I want to use for livestock farming. And then another section I want to use for production of cassava. And another section I want to use for production of plantain. Are you seeing it? So you can just get the plantain done. Just get the, clear the place, plant the plantain, clear the place, plant the cassava. And then you start fencing because you don't need to fence where you want to put plantain or where you want to put cassava. You don't need to fence it. Then you enter into the animal section. As you are uh, let me use the word struggling <laughs> as you are struggling with the activities of building an animal farm fencing pen this this this, this that before you know it the whole thing falls into one year and then you have your plantain and uh, plantain is eight months you have your plantain you have your cassava even though cassava is 12 months you have you have much money to put more into your animal farming i seen it all right so you can divide the lines of fractions and then you cover it gradually and then I see, see some persons who are doing um, um, animal husbandry. They are doing fish. They are doing poultry. They are doing pig. They are doing ruminants. Well, I think it's called intensive intensive system of um, um, livestock farming or live, um, animal husbandry. Um, when you want to do that, try to start with the one that is cheaper to maintain. The one that is cheaper to maintain will help you have enough resources to focus on the ones that are expensive to maintain and take for instance catfish is expensive to maintain um poultry either layer or boiler is expensive to maintain and um, pigry is expensive to maintain because every day you have to spend a high amount of money to feed them and that's why i say it's expensive to maintain though people still cash out from them they see cash out from them and then cows sheep goats they are not expensive to maintain because many of those fulani people who are rearing their cows they are not actually paying money for the feeding of those cows and either they are taking them out to go and be grazing from different places to different places which i am against um i don't advise anybody to carry their cows from one street to another street or from one bush to another bush to go and be eating grasses i don't support it i don't advise it uh, but people do that or you want to go and be cutting grasses and bring for your animals to eat there are a lot of grasses there some of those fulani used to do that they cut grasses for the animals to eat uh, grasses that are close to their camp most of their camps are always inside the forest if some camp um, some of their um 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 Animals are hungry, they go to the neighboring bushes, cut grass for their animals. And then there's a secret in their system. Some of the people who carry those animals for grazing are not the owner. And the owner will pay those people. Sometimes some of them are paid on daily basis to take the animals out to eat. And some are paid monthly. Some are paid yearly. And some of them are like that. But the ones that are paid daily, they'll contract with them to take the animals out to go and eat. The day the guy who takes them out is not feeling fine or is having misunderstanding with the owners of the cows, the owners of the cows sometimes, because they cannot graze the animals, either they or some other smaller children will go and cut grasses from the environment and feed their animals. Have you seen it? And then if you're having a farm and you are running um, um, ruminants, you can plant grass once, and once in a lifetime. Once you plant the grasses, the grasses will be producing seed, they'll be multiplying, and then um your animals will be eating all you need is to divide the land into paddocks paddock a b c d as much as you want to you can do paddock a to z you can do paddock a b c d a b c d means four or five portions of uh, paddocks if they are grazing january in one paddock february you relocate them to the second paddock that is if the paddock can sustain them for january so those are some of the things you consider when dividing your paddock. It should be big enough to come to be able to carry your animals, the numbers of animals you're having for one month. And for one month. So that when they eat it down, they go to paddock B, paddock A will be coming up. They'll be eating paddock B, paddock C and D. is still there getting bigger and getting stronger. 
sometimes paddock A, B, C, D, E may be harvested for hay or for silage because before they get there in four months, it may be very, very thick and very, very grown. So you can harvest them for some silage or hay. In the northern Nigeria, you can make hay, but in southern Nigeria, you make silage because hay, once you cut the grass, allowing them to wheat, rain may fall. A rain may fall. And so in southern Nigeria, it's not always easy. Remember when I used to walk south, I divide Nigeria into two. At the center of the map, just draw a line. That's what I mean when I mean southern Nigeria. It's difficult for us to have um, a long period of sun, except in from um, um, November down to March. And if you cut your grass one, st one time in the rainy season, it will, in the dry season, it will not regrow again. And then in the rainy season, we, can, we, may, we may not be able to get enough sun to do hay. That's why silage is the best options, the best option we are having in the south. And then um, in making silage, you can be creative. You can be creative in, in making silage. Um, you can, um, it may be, for instance, you have the Bracaria uh, mulatto or Bracaria rosicensis, like the one Animal Paradise is supplying, Bracaria rosicensis. You can harvest them, chop them, and um, um, chop them. In the process of chopping them, you can add so many other grasses to it. And yeah, that's why I say use the word be creative. You can add so many other grasses to it. Um, if you have a mango tree or mango trees in, in and around the community where you are, and you know that those mango trees, most of the time they are not used, the leaves can be added to your silage. Mango leaves can be added to your silage. And there's so many other kind of leaves that you know that um, um, cassava leaves can be added to your silage. Cassava leaves is high in protein, very high, <laughs> as far as it is. So if you mistakenly meet up with people who are harvesting their cassava, carry the leaves because they don't need it. And carry the leaves and uh, mingle it with your, with your silage. Or if you see people that are um, harvesting corn, yes. You can get the, the 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 stem. You know, is it the stem that stick that is standing that the corn is shooting out from? Once they break their corn off and take the corn away, the leftovers that standing stick. You can actually cut them, and you can cut them and mingle them with your silage. You can mingle them with your silage, and mingle all those things with your silage. All you need is to add um, molasses. Add molasses to eat molasses help it to ferment molasses also give it a lot of energy and um, sugar uh, molasses is a, is, a, is a byproduct of sugar it gives it a lot of energy to the silage and it's also happy to ferment ferment so you can make silage you can divide your paddocks into your, your land little paddocks and your animals will eat majorly the number of um um feed or the quantity of feed that is available to you or to your farm is what we actually determine the number of animals you can have yes uh, if uh, like i always say in the ratio that um one goat is equal to three children <laughs> so if you can feed three children you will know that that's what one goat will eat because um three children will eat breakfast lunch and dinner but goats will eat uninterruptedly uh, if you have a hundred goats, that means you have three hundred children. You just must feed them morning to evening, morning to evening, morning to evening. The more your goats eat, the better it will be. They will give birth on time. They will not have miscarriages. They will give birth on time. When you see see them, you will be you will be happy. When you see a goat that is feeding well, and when your animals are feeding well, all those antibiotics, antibiotics we used to make mention of, eh? You will not be needing them. Uh, it's when the major cause of the the major cause of sickness in 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 those animals is improper feeding i will not say lack of feeding improper improper um elephant grass is not a good feed for animals for goats elephant grass don't base the feeding of your animals on elephant grass and then if you want to have a goat farm have a different mentality from rearing goats and the fact that your parents were keeping goats when you were small in the house is vertically different from animal farming, goat farming. And they are just two different things. 
the ones you were keeping in the village that time were not having no management they had no limitation no restriction no management but the ones you will limit in a farm we need you will need to supplement for the restriction you will supplement for the limitation then you will manage them the goats in the village don't take they, they don't take um the warmers they don't know anything called avamectin they don't know anything called uh, tylosin they don't know anything called uh, sofodimedin the goats in the village don't know that they don't know liver miso they don't know vaccine they don't know because they are not limited but the goats in the farm if they don't know these things they'll be dying they'll be dying are you seeing it it's like people in prison or the, let me know it's what prison they are limited there is what they want that will make them happy and that thing is not available so you only give them what you what is available and because of that you have to supplement what is available because what is available may not have all that they need so if you're planning to have a goat farm buying the goat is not a problem the problem is what condition will the goat stay in in your farm will they be feeding well will they be feeding well what will they be eating some people will say that um i have one acre i have one, one plot of land i have two plot of land i have three plot of land i have four plot of land can i do goat farming you can do goat farming but the 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 extent of goat farming you will do will be limited because what will your animals eat in one plot and um, what will they eat what what how many um goats can one plot sustain and for how long are you seeing it because they are eating they are eating they are eating if you put 10 goats inside one plot of land maybe the plot is 100 by 100 um when they eat it up what nest will they eat let us even say that that 10 goats is sustained by that one plot of land for three weeks at most let us say the grasses are tall they are tall and it's thick it sustains them for three weeks after them what would they be eating so when you are planning to enter into goat farming plan what the animals will eat if you can answer the question of what your animals will eat you have so you have you are 90 percent successful in goat farming because if they are eating well they will not be needing medicine they will not be needing medicine i i think there's a there's a common saying in 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 my state here in Edo state that um good food is better than injection um, if your goats are eating good food quality feed they are eating bracaria they are eating alfalfa they are eating good feed maybe you're able to make silage with anything you can make silage with super napia you chop it you will silage it it will be soft goats can eat it even though they cannot eat fresh super napia or no they should not eat fresh super napia and, but if you used to make silage it will be good for them if it's so gum you're able to get to make silage make silage if you're able to answer the question of feeding you are 100 percent successful in your goat farming if your goats are eating well cold will not be killing them easily because their body will have fat to help them resist their body will be bulky and have fat and it will help them to resist cold in the night sicknesses will not be coming in it is when malnutrition comes into a goat that's when um warm load <laughs> will become high and when warm load is high then other disease will start to follow because the guy does not have nutrition he doesn't have nutrition at all so but if you are feeding your animals well their warm load will not be so high because warm load and malnutrition is they go hand in hand if they don't eat well you will definitely need to give them the warmers are you seeing it and so if you feed them well there are many diseases that will not make goats uh, he's standing in one place he's not eating if he's eating well before that time his body will fight those bacteria. my goats cannot stand up if he's walking will be will be staggering 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 all those are just a um, byproduct of not feeding well byproduct <laughs> Of, of not feeding well okay if you put your animals on quality feed 
every day for for five months they will give birth to healthy babies for you when they are not feeding well sometimes you see that um they are pregnant before you know they'll give birth to babies that cannot stand up they'll just give birth. Ah, you'll be happy ah my god give birth but at the end the babies can't stand up and maybe out of the two one will stand up one can't stand up sometimes the two can't stand up sometimes the one that can stand up will raise his front leg his back leg will not be able to raise some of all these things are as a result of a um, starvation or improper feeding and it will not make the goat lose body nutrition and then the baby will not eject and come out the baby that is supposed to have like one month more inside the mother's womb it will not eject and fall out and they will not have issues and say okay they will, after waiting for five months my goat is pregnant my goat is pregnant the goat not give birth the babies can't stand up or sometimes they will even give birth the breast is not flowing milk well the essence of all these things i'm saying is if you're planning to have a good farm goat farming is very lucrative if you dot the i's and cross the t's dot the i's and cross the t's if you don't dot the i's and cross the t's you'll be having mortality i'll get there maybe maybe this video or maybe the next video i'll make and i think i'll make two or three videos today and um, if you're not feeding them well they will be having issues a lot of different 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 issues they'll be having so work on feeding work on quality feeding if you before you do anything plan the feeding first because what is your plan your plan is to bring animals feed them let them increase in size and increase in number that's your plan let the animals increase in size and increase in number are you seeing it let them increase in size and increase in number and that is going to happen by proper feeding my car block anybody there okay that is going to happen by proper feeding if you're not properly feeding them you will not get the results you won't get the results and then if you want to do a commercial goat farming commercial goat farming commercial goat farming means you want to be rearing goats and selling to the public and not just for fun or for pets or for like you want to be commercial like making making money out of it you need to monitor how your workers feed your goats better still create a system where your goats go out to feed themselves they will be they'll be more happier that way a system where you have pastures you have grassland for them to go and eat different sections for them to go and eat you can still keep another section that you want to be harvesting for silage and then um if animals are grazing on grasses they don't grow tall and if animals graze on grass where a compound that is left or a land that is left on its own will grow in two weeks a land that the animals are grazing sometimes need more than two weeks for it to, to spring out and grow again and when they are grazing on the land the land does not grow back on time you have to give it a long time for it to recover i seen it so if you want to do commercial goat farming try to have a minimum of try to have a minimum of five acres can the fans stand in one place help me <laughs> let it <laughs> let it uh, you have a minimum of um five acres that five acres minimum if you want can have more have more you build the pen and the workers quarters in one small fraction then the remaining fractions you divide them into fractions of um paddocks you plant grasses on it different grass that you can plant let the animals go and graze they are ruminants if they are grazing they'll be doing well if they are grazing they'll be doing well and then the best feed for goats is grass even though you are able to do all these um um other kind of feed they are just supplements you are using to supplement the grass let them feed on green grass let them cut it and eat it by themselves they will do well they will do excellently and then it will help you you will not stress yourself so much your workers will not stress themselves so much when your workers are stressing themselves a high percentage of that stress is coming on you because they won't meet up with their targets you will say one thing and they won't do it you will say it over and over again and you'll be nagging 
because this work is stressful. It's stressful. I remember there were times, uh, sections of times where in uh, Animal Paradise, we um, um, we we kept our animals inside the, the where they used to sleep. The workers would come bring grass for them. Oh God, a lot of complaints and stress. I will always be on the camera. Let me see the number of let me see the grasses before you give it to them. Put it here, put it there, put it here, put it there. Even though I'm looking from camera, all the grasses look green. It is not every green grass that animals can eat. <laughs> All the grasses you are seeing on camera, they all look green. But when you come there physically, you will see that the goats are able to select some things and eat and leave the remaining ones. Goats just eat all over. And some of these workers will go and they will just enter bush and start clearing. After they clear, they will pack everything they clear. Both the ones that are good for the goats and the ones that are not useful to the goats. I may not say they are bad for the goats because they are not poisonous, but they are not useful to the goats. They'll pack everything and dump it down. You will look at camera, everything is green. It looks like green grass. And they cut it some, sometimes when they ever come, you will see them. They'll bind it with rope and heap it on their head and be coming. Sometimes the two, the two people will go like three times and heap it down from breakfast. Then they'll go again and heap three times, two of them, six times. They will heap it down for lunch. But some of the grasses are not useful to the animals. They're not useful to the goats. Have you seen it? And so, make preparation on how to have good feed for your animals. If you have good feed, then your animals will do well. And don't leave, don't leave 100%, don't 100% leave the feeding of your animals to your workers. They are there for your salary. They are there for the money you are paying. You are the one that have love for the animals they don't whatsoever they are showing is because of the money you are paying them if you want to test it stop that money for two months if i wait months and tell them there is delay you are not able to pay just give them one story you will see the character will change and the media is just there for the money and when they get a, a bigger salary elsewhere they don't come up for your farm have you seen it so you cannot put the 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 invest your investments on um, the, um, the, the management of your, of your investment on those strangers and uh, some there are some persons that are very good in passing interview and um, some of them are eye service also when you are there they talk to you they talk their talk will convince you you will say ah this person is a good person but he may not be able to deliver when you are not there when you are not there so some of those eye service managers or eye service farm workers they will talk and talk and talk and talk and talk when you leave they do zero and so, when you have your farm, um, systematically uh, monitor how your animals are being fed. That is the secret to the survival of your farm. If your animals are not feeding well, you'll be having reasons to be discouraged. You'll be hearing different, different, different stories every day. Um, we just got into the pen. We met this one dead. They went for grazing. As they came back, we find out that one, uh, when the numbers were not complete. When we went inside the field, we now saw that one died. The other one, uh, uh, we were just sitting down under the tree. We now hear one was crying, was crying, was crying. We now went there and go and see. It was not doing one kind, doing one kind. And before the next day, he now died. <laughs> just walk on feeding. The reason why I'm emphasizing feeding is because dry season is here is knocking at our door now dry season is knocking at our door now every other thing is good about the dry season apart from feeding there will be no cold the animals will be doing well there will be no rain the animals will be very do they'll be blossoming they'll just be doing well you'll see them happy jumping around the baby animals will be happy but feed is going down the fields they are going down the grasses are going down you just have to if you even though your own your own land dry up other lands that used to go and get emergency grasses from they're all going to dry down dry dry up how will you feed your animals now begin to plan it down plan it down and there are a lot of options some of the options was that i think i made a video at the at this um in the rainy season that we should prepare for the dry season by making hay or making silage Silage is laborious. You need a lot of hand to be able to make enough silage. You need a lot of hands, and sometimes for days. 
hay on the other hand it's also laborious they have to cut the grasses somebody have to turn it there is still laborious i seen it and then you can buy feed which is not so advisable you can buy feed from all the caras caras is a place where they sell animals and animal feeds you go there you buy feed um, it's very expensive very expensive very expensive but you can do that you can still make use of the um, waste in your environment you can you make use of cassava waste cassava peels you can make use of corn leftovers when people harvest corn the leftovers and even though the corn the cob the corn cob is not there to produce enough nutrition for the stock or the, the, the stochastic that is standing if the corn is not there to produce you can add things to it you can add molasses to it you can get a uh, silage inoculants there's something called silage inoculants uh, that one is yeah, even, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not so sure it's expensive i've not used it before you get it you spray it on the silage it provides um um it helps it to ferment and also provide nutrition for the silage and uh, you can do that you can use molasses which is a common one that we used to use to ensile uh, your whatsoever you have and as funny as it may be it sound there are a lot of things available in your environment that goes into it just discover them find out how to preserve them for the dry season and preserve them for the dry season yeah whatsoever you are able to do um get a high number of bags bags them and keep them you will need them if you don't do that if you don't prepare for the dry season um you're going to spend a lot of money on feed and you're going to lose some animals you're going to lose some animals and then if you're not feeding your animals where well, you'll be spending a lot of money on drugs you'll be buying drugs buying drugs buying drugs because the animals will be falling sick and getting weak you'll be buying drugs but if you can give them good feeding they will do well they will do well this is animal paradise subscribe to our youtube channel animal paradise farm we have a lot of videos there um and god is helping us we are sharing our experiences and also helping to educate systematically educate people on the youtube though the knowledge available on youtube is a little bit different from the knowledge from real life or, or from experience as uh, the knowledge is available on youtube like i always say that every farm has its uniqueness the system and the pattern we run in our own farm you may not be able to run it in your own farm and so just a general knowledge uh, like we used to say that example is not exam and uh, your teacher will teach you in class and show you example but when you get to exam you will forget it, it will be turned upside down <laughs> it will turn upside down so most times that's how the youtube knowledge and the real life experience is there are, there is a difference between it and um, if your animal is sick give him this one if you have one give him this one give him that one give him that one that's just the knowledge available on YouTube. Take for instance, when an animal is having a warm load, we will see they generally say, okay, give, give, it, give it avamectin. There are times you use more than one meal of avamectin for one animal. If the animal in my farm may be needing one meal, the one in your own farm may be needing more than one meal. Because of the managemental program or well, of the warming program in my farm, I may need to deworm my animal this Monday and wait for four weeks. But in your own farm, we may need to deworm the animal today, jump tomorrow, and deworm it next tomorrow. And jump next tomorrow, and deworm it sometimes five times in ten days. And because of the warm load that it's having. Are you seeing it? And so, sometimes, the knowledge available on YouTube is a little bit different from the one available uh, from um, life experience. That's why we have Animal Paradise Mentorship Club. A mentorship club some people wonder why there's so much knowledge on youtube on youtube there's virtually not uh, virtually nothing you have not spoken about on goat farming yes that's just on youtube and when you come to your farm you will see that sometimes the the status quo is different <laughs> it's different uh, it's not the way we said it on youtube that it is in in your farm and uh, there may be difference are you seeing it uh, there are sometimes uh, I think I made one video where we were giving drip to our goats. 
somebody saw it say, Yi? did they give drip to goats? <laughs> yeah. Uh, while that same matter where we give drip to our goats, in another farm, that person will use, will use multivitamin. We say, okay, let's give the goat multivitamin. They will give the goat multivitamin. After two, three days, the goat will die. Uh, but was multivitamin the right, the right thing to give it? Yes. It was good to give it multivitamin, but it has spent too much time. It has lost so much energy before you gave it multivitamin. Question, how do you know the one that need only multivitamin and the one that need drip? <laughs> how do you know? That one is not on YouTube. Are you saying this? That one is not on YouTube. And so when we come physically and see the situation, we will know how swift to move to get things done. Are you seeing it? How swift to move to get things done. And then in all these things that we do, there are different patterns. There are different patterns. There are different patterns, different ways to get the answer. Uh, there are different ways to get the answer. So that's why we have something like Animal Paradise Mentorship Club. Uh, it's a registered group. We have, I think, two, two registered, two paid group on WhatsApp. They are paid. Animal Paradise Mentorship Club and Animal Paradise Forum. There's an Animal Paradise Forum. You pay to join those two groups because... Um, there are benefits and services on those groups. And then, um, in the mentorship club, your farm is an extension of Animal Paradise Farm. Sometimes when you hear that Animal Paradise travel to somewhere, is a member of the mentorship club farm I go to. I don't go to any farm that is a member of the mentorship club farm. Um, mentorship club. Those are the people's farms that I go to. Those are the people's farm where we make videos. That's why we are bold enough to say, hey, let's make video. Let's show your animals. Sometimes we don't show the people's face because the farm, in context, is a, a fraction of our own farm. I see it. So we are able to make videos and uh, share with everybody what we are doing there, how the farm is going, how everything is going. I made a video recently, um, an experience of a, of a Nigerian goat farmer. You see that farm is doing well. Uh, maybe one day, the, that man is overseas. When it comes to Nigeria, I'm going to interview him in my video. Or I can make uh, make a video on, on, on Zoom and talk with him one day. I would love him to share his experience. His experience. I think he's in um, either China or Japan. One of those two countries. Um, he actually built a very big goat farm. He strategized and then he now made a mistake of buying goats from um, markets. He bought over 100 big, big Nigerian animals. And he lost everything, I think, in two months. Yeah. They were just calling him Oga before they wake up. Oga, seven goats don't die. He said, ah, what happened? Before evening, another six don't die. <laughs> uh, the market, we are laughing now. We were not laughing that time. Yeah. We were not laughing that time. You know, when you see the goats, you know, when you buy goats, you have this kind of love and passion and happiness about something that you bought. When they start dying, my brother, hey, you will suspect witchcraft. <laughs> you see, now somebody did do something somewhere. Meanwhile, it's PPRO that is just, just uh, dancing up and down. Are you seeing it? So the man bought to buy 100, but later, um, he just said, okay, enough of all this, <laughs> enough of all this. I think there were not remaining some numbers. He now said they should slaughter them and, and do one or two things with it. They should slaughter them. Have you seen it? Then he now said, Animal Paradise, what do we do? I said, Good. The first thing we will do, let us fumigate the farm. We now bought different chemicals because PPRO virus have entered that place. It's there. It's in, it's in that farm. We must spray those farm to kill the PPRO because some will, will poo poo. And stain the wall some will use qatar to stain the wall and all those stuff then the virus will be there so we fumigated the whole place we spray everywhere with the chemicals we used to use there are some chemicals we used to mix together to spray and um, to spray when we see um ppro in a place like that we sprayed and then we begin to bring in those goats you saw on that video i think they have over 50 50 something numbers of goats in that place now. The mortality is about three. Yeah, I'm saying three at most because I think it's two, but I'm just putting that three at most that have died in that farm since this year. Since this year, just like three goats that have died. 
Are you seeing it? So the mortality was low because we were able to pass through the proper strategy and um, um, bring goats to the farm or brought goats to the farm. And then the workers there also were feeding the animals well. Every time I go there, I see the animals robust, robust, robust. That's the secret of goat farming, actually. When most people tell you that um, they are falling out of goat farming, they, they started, they want to stop, um, they, are not, they are not increasing, the animals are dying, it's feeding. When you are able to cross the stage of stalking and get your animals stable, the next thing you do is feeding. If you're not feeding them well, you'll be hearing miscarriage, you'll be hearing mortality, you'll be hearing death, you'll be hearing different, different things. So, strategize to feed your animals well. That's the business of goat farming. Getting goats and feeding them. Getting goats and feeding them well. That's the business of goat farming. So, if you feed them well, every other thing will fall into place. Every other thing will fall into place. So, study on how to preserve and make feed preserve and make feed study on how to do it in your own area in your own region and in our own region or in my own farm i know what i do to to um prepare feed for animals and this season maybe by by january we will not only be having enough um feed we may even be able to supply to some other persons because of the way we are strategizing to store off feed mix things do things together to supplement for the dry season we may not have much grasses yeah but we can have some other things to supplement to supplement this is animal paradise farm i'm making a video today i think i'm going to make three videos today and today is my relaxation day i'm relaxing today <laughs> I'm relaxing today. I just want to calm down, relax, and smile. Yeah, just be cool. You know? So, I'm going to make another video. This one is 40 minutes. I just wanted to do some introduction, and now it's 40 minutes. I have not started what I want to do. I'm going to go back there. I have about five points to share. I pray that that five points will take one video or two videos. If it does, fine. I will post all of them. Meanwhile, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are a lot of people that are watching our channels. Yeah, we see over 5,900 and something people watching our channels that are not subscribing. The subscription will help us. <laughs> yeah, when you subscribe, it's, it's a kudos to us. It will encourage us um, in the work we are doing. And basically, when you subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. But that subscription will help us on the YouTube channel. It does help on the social media. It does help. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. And your, you, you subscribing will push us up. And then it will cost you nothing. And we are trying. Most times, um, it takes time to make these videos. It takes time. Even though um, what we are talking about is in us. And we don't really have to prepare for it. We just, it's what we do. It's part of us. Uh, but it's time take for instance 40 minutes now i'm here talking 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 and then for, i think a 50 minutes video only god know how many gigabytes it's going to take us to upload it and we're going to upload about three videos today and so your subscription goes a long way to encourage us encourage us so find out how to always subscribe on our videos it will push us up on the youtube channel Thank you very much. This is Animal Paradise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our page on Facebook, and then join our mentorship club, Animal Paradise Mentorship Club. Join our mentorship club. It will also help us all the Animal Paradise Forum. Anyone you want to join, send us a message on WhatsApp, and then we will add you to it. At the bottom of every of our videos, we have our, our WhatsApp numbers. They are there. There are always two numbers there. You can call or send message to any of those numbers for us to add you to any of the group you want to join. Thank you very much. I'm going to end this video now. I will make another one to talk about the points I want to talk about. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.